Hey guys, welcome to Relatable. Happy Friday, hope everyone has had a great week so far. It is October, which means that Halloween is just around the corner, so I am going to address a topic that many of you have asked me to talk about, and that is, should Christians celebrate Halloween, or how should we celebrate Halloween if we do? I am going to talk to a very special guest, and that is my mother. I think that she did a really great job growing up of uh, showing us how to celebrate things in a godly way, so she's got some insight for us today. Before we actually get into that conversation, I want to tell you about Genesis 950. So if you guys are like me, you've got pets, maybe your pet has had an accident on your carpet and you're thinking about getting rid of your carpets. Before you do that, you have to try this cleaner and that is called Genesis 950. What it does is it breaks down the bonds of stains and odors so they are gone permanently. It also has an antibacterial component that removes the stains and odors from carpet and padding. It can be used in carpet cleaning machines. It's also uh, green, so it's safe for your family and for your pets. Uh, one gallon of industrial strength Genesis 950 can actually make up to seven gallons of cleaner, which is amazing. Uh, it's not just for pet stains. You can also clean your entire house, so that's bathrooms, that's kitchens, that's countertops, granite quartz, garage floors, grease stains, all of that. So before you purchase new carpet or new rugs or anything that you feel like is irrevocably, irrevocably harmed, uh, try Genesis 950. You will love it. Go to Genesis950.com. You will receive a free spray bottle and a discount using code BLAZE. That is B-L-A-Z-E. That's Genesis950.com. Genesis950.com. Okay, now I am going to talk to my lovely mother about Halloween. So a lot of people have asked me to talk about how I was raised. They've asked me a lot about my parents. They've asked me to interview my parents. And so now I am giving you what you have asked for since your wish is always my command. So mother, could you tell everyone a little bit about who you are, what you do, what you like to do, and why you're here? Well, I'm Allie's mom mostly, and uh, I have two other children and um, four four grandkids now. So um, yeah, two just, additions this summer. So it's kind of hard to keep count. Yeah, um, I was a school teacher, you know, long time ago, and I've homeschooled. I've done, you know, I've kind of stayed a teacher. I'm just uh, kind of a teacher at heart. Yes. So. Um, yeah. yeah, and a lot of people have asked me, because I think I mentioned once on the podcast that one thing that I'm so appreciative of, because my grandmother was also a teacher, my mom, like she said, is a teacher, and both of them were at home a lot with me when I was little, and so they took a lot of time to teach me things, to teach me especially how to read and how to write and how to memorize things, and I've gotten questions about that when I've mentioned it on the podcast so just before we get into the Halloween conversation, which we are going to get into, for the moms that are wondering, okay, how do I make sure that my child is a good communicator? What are some things that you did with us when we were little? Well, of course, the, the biggest thing is to talk to your kids and to read to them. I mean, it's really that simple. Um, like even when they're infants or? From the get-go. I mean, I read books uh, to all of you when you were just tiny infants. There was no way you couldn't even hold your head up. But yeah. I was reading Kids books or just any books? Kids books, mostly. And little words, you know, and things especially that rhyme because it's very important and people don't really understand this that there's a rhythm to reading. Yeah. And when you teach your kids to read, um, even Mother Goose yeah. and just little things that rhyme, they pick it up easier. That's why songs, um, you know, kids' songs are so popular. Yeah, because they learn that quicker. They learn that quicker. It's the reason and why so, we sing the ABCs rather than exactly. say the ABCs. Yeah. So if you read books that rhyme, they begin to pick up, and and that also makes them a good reader because it's important as you're reading not to just read like the you know like yeah. a robot and they get more out of it when they're reading in an energetic way and a fun way. Yeah, I think that does help. And you kind of had me memorize books and not just the alphabet, but also the words that corresponded with the letters in the alphabet. And I do think, I mean, I don't know that much about teaching your kids or I've never been a teacher 
either, but it seems from my own distant memory that making those kinds of connections, especially like you said with songs, helps you not just with, okay, memorizing things, but having some kind of comprehension mm -hmm. and being able to repeat it in a meaningful way. So I think that's I think that's what you and dad and grandma all did growing up. And then also I would say we had a, like a close relationship growing up. You also just had conversations with me. Yes, I think. Yeah, and I I think that's important that um, I'm not against baby talk. I mean I talk baby talk to your daughter and my other grandkids and all that. But it's also important to talk to them like a person and to have conversations on their level, of course, but um, to not be afraid to use big words um, and and then helping them to understand the context of how that happens. And it's amazing how uh, quickly uh, you and, and other kids and um, learn that way just by having conversations. It's just so important to just talk. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that sometimes we think that, oh, well, kids don't understand, and so it's not, we don't really need to talk to them about stuff, but I guess that really is how we learn. It is amazing just how quickly kids pick up. I mean, obviously, my daughter is only 13 weeks old, but you can tell already they start having some kind of emotional or natural reaction to certain things that you say. It's just amazing to watch their minds kind of develop. Okay, we're going to talk about Halloween. Thank you for dressing in Halloween themed yes. clothing. That's very important for this podcast. Mm -hmm. I always get very dressed up as you can tell. Um, and this is a topic that I think is a little bit controversial. There are a lot of different views on it. And I think that there are a lot of different biblically valid views on it that can differ. That's not true with every single subject. Not everything is relative, but with something like Halloween, there are a lot of different ways that people approach something like this. But um, from your perspective, and you can start wherever you want to from the, you know, how Halloween started and all of that, from your perspective, how can Christians think about this in a way that is God honoring? Well, you know, there's a whole history of Halloween, uh, beginning with the Celtics and, and starting, you know, back it in the... It was like All Hallows' Eve. Yeah, and they they were really celebrating the harvest, and but they didn't know who God was. They weren't Christians, yeah. you know, at this point. It was when the Catholic Church came in and kind of mixed those two that it it began to take a little more um, of a turn toward what we know now as Halloween. And so I there were, yes, a lot of satanic rituals that uh, we would associate with the original Halloween celebrations, but... Um, and there probably still is some. And there I mean, is. There's people that there are, are definitely with the occults. The and Wiccans and, and things like that. Yes, they take this opportunity to um, just celebrate Satan. Uh, to celebrate yeah. evil, yeah, and um, and that's very true. Um, I grew up, you know, the traditional trick or treating, dressing up in every kind of costume that there uh, that there was, and so I didn't really think about it when I was growing up. It, it, no one ever said to me, "Oh, you shouldn't do that," and we were church going, you know, Christians, um, so. Uh, that wasn't an issue. It was only when I had children and that it started, the, I heard just, just sort of this rumbling among moms. Oh, should we really be dressing up and celebrating Satan? So you hadn't really thought about I it. I had before. not thought about it. Yeah. And um, so I took the, the tactic, okay, well, maybe we just won't dress in evil yeah. you know, costumes. And that's what I remember. Yeah, that we'll just dress in fun costumes. I mean, my favorite costume for you was lamb chop. Oh, yes. And, uh, That's another thing. She's very creative and crafty. <laughs> she made my lamb chop costume. Now, there are people listening to this podcast that are too young to know who what lamb, lamb chop, chop is, is well, which makes me feel very old. Yes, lamb chop was a little puppet that she loved and she um, just loved it. So she was probably about two years old and I got a white um, sweatsuit and 
glued, I mean, literally, this is how creative I am. I glued or felt red buttons on it and got a little hat and put eyelashes on it. And that was... That is pretty the, creative. Your, um, if I can find the picture, the picture somewhere in your house, yeah. maybe I'll post it I'll, on yeah. Instagram. <laughs> yeah. And anyway, that was my favorite, my favorite one. So... So not scary stuff. Tried to do not scary stuff. I do now, looking back, I saw some pictures like, I think Justin was a vampire one year. Oh, yeah. You know, this, so would you so. do that? Would you now... Mm -hmm. knowing what you know, would you still allow your kids to dress as a vampire or witch or something? I would not. You know, I just don't see any point in uh, sort of glorifying evil or scary. Evil or scary. You know, yeah, why do that? I mean, there's just no point. It's fun to dress up. Kids don't know the difference. If they're dressing up as a ballerina or a doctor, they think it's fun. So why not just do something fun? Um, so for years, I really, I decorated for fall. I didn't do really the Halloween, you know, black cats and witches and that kind of stuff. And, and it was really when you were little, probably when you were five or six years old and, um, Allie was always my, uh, let's have a party person. So everybody else's houses were decorated with the traditional Halloween and, um, oh, I think you, you let me put spider webs up once. You, you said, Mom, can't we just have a black cat? <laughs> and I, I was trying to explain to you why we didn't do that. And yeah, I think, she never decorated for Halloween. I think and Grandma I finally bought you like a little statue with a little witch and a black cat, and I let you have it. <laughs> so anyway, it was, um, you know, I just was always torn because I didn't want to be, you know, that. Funny uh, to Yeah. A fuddy duddy, yeah, just a stick in the mud about it. But I just didn't want to glorify something that shouldn't be glorified. So, probably when you were about 13, um, I was sitting in church one Sunday and uh, the pastor started preaching from Ezekiel. And the verse he said was, Oh, dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. Now, I'm sure I'd heard that verse hundreds of times before, it never hit me. But that Sunday, it was like this huge light bulb went off like, oh, I could use that for Halloween. Yeah. And so I went home, literally went to the home improvement store, got some uh, cloth, like drop cloths that you use for paint, mm -hmm. and came home and uh, drew that on this drop cloth, decorated it in fun Halloween colors, and um, put some skeletons, you know, out beside it. And that was my Halloween yeah. thing. And then I was like, I got so excited. I went and made another one with jack-o'-lanterns mm -hmm. and, you know, said... Like, uh, let your light shine. Yeah, let your light so shine. And so I put, those were my only two that year. And in that, at that time, the neighborhood we lived in, we would have at least 300 trick-or-treaters. Yeah. It and was like constant. It was constant. You, I, every year I would run out of candy. I would think I have enough and I never had enough. And um, so, and the reason I knew that there were about 300 is because I made up about 300 of these little tracks just on construction paper um, about a pumpkin and how we are like a pumpkin, how God comes in and scoops out the yucky stuff and puts a light inside of us, you know, very yeah. simple. Yeah. And um, I would put those in with the candy. So I made up the first year, I made up 300 of those thinking, you know, I'll have enough for two or three years. No, I ran out. So I know so that So did you we, type up those little cards? I did. You I typed, typed them up, up and printed them on orange and uh, like So basically lime shared the gospel in a kid-friendly yeah. way and using was, the pumpkin. It was, That's yeah, cute. Tiny little yeah. thing. And I put a couple of scriptures on it. I only had one child uh, give it back to me. And that was because she was not um, of the Christian faith. So, and I thought it was very polite of her. And, um, you know, she wasn't rude about it. She just, you know, said thank you very much and she handed it back so um mostly the parents loved it they did so what were some of the responses that you got um the parents would come to me you know when their kids they would go i love your signs because then of course each year i would add a different kind of sign so this so you had just so everyone can get a picture out front in front of your house you had the sign like oh dry bones hear ye the word of the lord with the skeletons on it 
that you made and then you would also have the like let your light so shine with the pumpkins on it and so you would take bible verses um and not not you're not changing them no. they're you're just kind of decorating around you're attaching them. it to you a know a traditional message. a traditional yeah. halloween um uh, decoration Decor, yeah. and then but putting a, a christian message with it yeah and i started calling it holy ween mm -hmm. now i realized that hallow means holy yeah so it's but people like don't I really think it. about but that anymore. yeah we don't really use the word hallow uh that much yeah. so i wanted and it sounds now i think of it as scary yes uh, hallow. yes and uh so holy to me, just said the what I wanted people to see. Um, so I, I painted a banner that of Jesus and you know the the traditional Jesus and the children coming to him picture that we see. Well, I painted the kids coming in in um, costume, mm -hmm. and uh, so let the children come to me, and you know that was one of the banners. Then I did a Charlie Brown one, you know um, about. Uh, walk as children of light mm -hmm. and I did that one so it it was becoming people were starting to want one of these banners mm -hmm. and I was like I can't paint everybody a banner yeah. you know and I was trying to get them to you go paint it yeah you know you go, I'm not an artist at all and you yeah. can tell from some of the banners they're really bad yeah, you were just doing this for fun at your own house exactly. you weren't like oh these are professional I'm, I'm making trying, a business no, out of it not at yeah. all but but parents would come to me, where did you get your signs? Or can you they make me a sign? They just like the idea so they much. They probably the didn't idea. care that it wasn't perfect. And literally when, uh, and I started to do it for other holidays as well. And uh, when we moved, somebody who I did not know walked up to my door, rang the doorbell and said, are the new owners going to do the banners? Aww. <laughs> so I felt so bad. Um, That's sweet. But anyway, I did find an online company that um, I can create vinyl banners. I've sold a few of those. I'm not trying to go into the vinyl banner business. Yeah. <laughs> you can go on the same website and, and make your own. Yeah. They, they have some, you know, just really stock vinyl banners that you can add your own pictures to in your own words it's very simple so um, i encourage people to do that and i've also done t-shirts and the little oh yes things. this is a little onesie <laughs> that she gave that she gave me it's cute let your light so shine matthew five sixteen. it's super cute yeah there are all kinds of ways i think that you can redeem things like this although i do understand it's kind of like i was taught someone asked me couple of weeks ago about Christians and alcohol. And obviously you don't drink. There are a lot of Christians that don't drink. And I've always said that is a totally viable, valid option. And maybe that's the best and the wisest option. But it is, there is a way to responsibly drink as a Christian. The Bible warns against uh, drunkenness and um, filling yourself with wine for that is debauchery as Ephesians says, but there is a way to responsibly drink as long as you are keeping those things in mind as well as keeping in mind the faith and the struggles of the people around you. And I think it can be similarly said of Halloween that if someone feels like they can't celebrate Halloween at all, that it's strictly pagan, it's strictly satanic, there is no part for a Christian to play in it, I think that's okay. And I know I mentioned earlier, oh, you don't want to be a fuddy-duddy. I don't want to imply that people who don't celebrate Halloween are that way. There are valid reasons. But I also think it can be valid to redeem it as much as you can and use it to share the gospel. And I think you don't have to decorate. You can do like, I still just decorate with really fall things and now my banners. Yeah. Um, but um, I think you could just have a cookout at your house. Um, our church does a, a thing called Light the Night and they just encourage people. We don't have a fall festival anymore. We used to have this gigantic fall festival um, and now they just encourage people to stay home and have a cookout in your front yard or your backyard or invite your neighbors and just do fun stuff like that to encourage people um, to one, get to know each other. We don't really know our neighbors anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, just to, if you can, share the gospel. And I, I just think, what other night or day of the year do people come knock on Are your you door? Are you strangers? Yeah, yeah it's very and true. you open the door without yeah. uh, you know hesitancy. Yeah, yeah. And then, and and they're asking for something, and you can give them 
what you want. Yeah. And they'll take it. Yeah. Now, you don't necessarily know what they do with it. But you can't control I, what happens after that. After that, you don't know. But from my experience, people came back year after year. I love your house. Not, yeah. not my house, but what Coming we did with our house. house. Yeah. Coming to your house. I love that you do this. Um, and I would always say, then go do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's fun. I love thinking of you know scripture in a different way, and how can I share this in in yeah. a way that's not um, uh, scary or like I'm coming at you with a you know giant Bible or something. Yeah. And I, like I said, I've I've really never had anybody. I've had more people say I love this, I love what you're doing than yeah. uh, any because kind of you well they don't have to take it. They can throw it away yeah. when they get home if they want to. I'm not following to. up with them. Yeah. <laughs> the next day, um, did you read that that I put in your yeah. <laughs> trick or treat bag? Yeah. yeah. I think that, that that you make a really good point. A lot of people think of Christians as going door to door and knocking on their door and saying, "Do you know Jesus?" Not that there's necessarily anything wrong with that, but now the roles are reversed. Mm -hmm. People are coming up to you, knocking on your door, and saying, "What do you have for me?" And there's no reason for a Christian. Yes, you can give candy too. But yeah, there's no reason, yeah, there's no reason whatsoever for a Christian not to give something that's actually going to give sustenance forever. Yes, eternal. Eternal, eternal sustenance. Yeah. And I think so many times Christians, we're just afraid. We're afraid that we're going to offend someone. We, we just want people to think that we're nice. We want yeah. people to know that we're not the bigoted kind of Christian. Like we're right. not the mean kind of Christian. And so unfortunately, a lot of people use that as an excuse to not talk about Christianity. To just blend in. To, yes, to just blend in, to not share the gospel. I'm just going to share candy, and maybe if I'm really nice to them, they'll see the love of Jesus yeah. in me. But I think more times than not, and especially from what you said from your experience, people like not only the kindness, but they're looking for truth. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're looking for light in a night that they feel like is dark. Mm -hmm. Don't you think as a young mom, when you were conflicted about whether this is good or bad, if someone had reached out to you and shown you some sign of redemption in Halloween, you would have felt, I don't know, comforted by that? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I you know, I was trying to figure it out on my own. Of course, there was no internet to, to go look at or look up uh, answers or uh, in a chat room or any of that. You know, there was nothing. So you just kind of uh, did what other people did and um, tried to figure it out. And this, you know, I, I'm sad that it came so late and you didn't get to really experience it since you were Mom, already you, a teenager. If you want to whip out the lamb chop <laughs> costume, I'll try to see if I can wear it again yeah, this year. Yeah. I'll go trick-or-treating just I'll, for you. I'll save it for baby girl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I do think it's important, though, for Christians to stay away from the glorification of evil and the satanic and things like that and to stay on the light and right side of it as much as they possibly can because I, I quote Ephesians all the time, but I was thinking about a verse the other day that convicted me that it was talking about the fruits of darkness and the people of darkness. And it says, God through Paul says, it's shameful to even speak of the things that they do in secret. But the fruit of light is everything that is good and right and true. Walk as children of light, which is one of the verses that you have used. And that's so convicting to me. How often do we just kind of like toe the line in the evil works of darkness? Like we talk about it. We might even be fascinated by it. We might play with it a little bit on something like Halloween, but I don't think Halloween is an excuse for Christians to all of a sudden be like, yeah, the darkness and evil is okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. And um, I think it's just some of the verses that I've used over the years. I've mentioned um, the Ezekiel one, which is Ezekiel 37, 4, O oh, dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. Um, Psalm 139, 14, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And the banner that I did with that was just one of children dressed in Halloween costumes, you know, great message. And it's just, you know, it's still a, has a Halloween theme, but I'm getting a message out yeah. there through that verse. Cute. Um, the one you mentioned, Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine. Um, Ephesians 5, 8, walk as children of light. Um, this one was a little out there. And, I and still, this is for verses that you can use for banners and for things banners. like that. Or yeah. just to think about. Yeah. Oh. And um, I just found it, you know, really easy to, to, to 
attach a verse with yeah. that. Um, this one was a little bit out there. Um, I had just read Mark Batterson's, um, I think it was Grave Robber um, book at the time. So I thought, oh, Grave Robber, how can I do that? And so I came with uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 55, that death has no power over us, mm -hmm. that there's no sting in death. And so I found a traditional Halloween graveyard uh, picture, put it on a banner, and put ultimate grave robber oh, yeah. with that verse. So most people That's don't cute. really get that one, but yeah. I still like it. Oh, I like that. There's yeah. definitely something you can do with tomb and grave. Yes, and... yeah. And you know what? If nothing else, it gets people to go look for that verse. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe yeah. they'll go read it and go, oh, I never thought about that. Well, if we believe that the Word of God is powerful and sufficient, and certainly that the Holy Spirit works, that's another thing that you could use. Holy Ghost, yes. Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of, that's one that's sort of been around for a long time. I'm sure people have seen no one lives here, no ghost lives here but the Holy Ghost or yeah. something like that. You know, and that's been around for a long time. Um, and then the Matthew 19, 14, let the children come to me and having, you know, a Jesus thing. I haven't really found a vinyl banner option for that one yet. So still working on that one. Um, Genesis 121, God created every living creature. And that one I did spiders and cats and bats and, you know, which are all living creatures that God made and then just put that verse with it. And yeah. they also happen to be Halloween um, yeah. items. That's cute. And then uh, Romans 10, 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I used an owl uh, oh, for like the calling. Who, you know. Oh, so, oh yeah. okay. Who, yeah. yeah. I know, that's she's a little very, out there no, too. <laughs> she's very creative. Very so creative. anyway, those are just some fun ones. And um, every year I try to think of a, a new way to use a verse. And um, so anyway. So I, I for, for moms it. that maybe are where you were and maybe where I'll be in a few years of, okay, they're not creative, they're not crafty, they can't do this stuff, or maybe they feel like they don't have time to do this stuff. What are some other ways that moms can kind of feel like they are uh, celebrating this in a glorifying way? Or what are some ways that they can talk to their own kids about it? Yeah. Um, well, I just think, one, you don't have to go, we don't do that. We do this. Like, yeah. we're like we're better than some other people who maybe celebrate in a different way because you don't want to ever <clears throat> one make your kids feel like they're better than everybody else um, but you also don't want to make them feel ostracized like we are so different that you know we are not you know we're in the world not of the world and we get all uh, hung up in that but um, I think you can exp you know explain what fall is and how fun how God created uh, the the fall season and we celebrate things in lots of different ways we have Thanksgiving in the fall and and Halloween and that's a day you know this is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and uh, from Psalm 118 and so um, don't don't let it be uh, a day that um, Satan has taken yeah. over these are all days that God has made. And I think you emphasize that to your kids and just, you know, you don't have to make a big deal about, we don't do this. We only do this. And, yeah. It's um, kind of, this is who we are as a family. This is what we believe. This is what our heart is surrounding this. Now I do think I could imagine that there could be some points of clarification that might be needed for older kids, or it depends on mm -hmm. what age they are for, okay, can people really like rise from the dead? Do skeletons really rise from the dead? Are there really witches? Are there really vampires? Um, and they might have questions about that. And I do think it's important for one, for parents to know the answers to those things theologically, to know what the Bible says about those things. You can even, if you want to get really in depth, you can talk to your kids about the resurrection of the bodies that's going to happen yeah. <laughs> and the difference between that and skeletons walking around today and zombies and all that kind of stuff. I know at some point maybe that can be 
easy for older kids to be able to compartmentalize. They know witches aren't real and it's not a big deal to them. But it might also be important for parents to have those conversations with kids that, okay, you might see some people celebrating uh, this kind of stuff, but here's what the Bible, here's what the Bible says about this. And you don't need to be scared because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. You're going to see a bunch of scary stuff tonight. You don't have anything to worry about because the God of the universe is protecting you. Yeah. I think that's also important because kids can, even if you celebrate it in the right way, kids can get scared. They see stuff on TV. Yeah. They have a friend or a cousin who told them a scary story. Yeah, yeah. So. And it's just like anything with your kids. You don't uh, talk to your two-year-old two um, in the same way you would talk to your uh, eight yeah. or 10-year-old uh, about any subject. So you do the same thing with Halloween. You know, um, you have fun with it in, in an appropriate way that, that you feel is right for your family. You use as much biblical background as you can and um use it to you know, share the gospel use it to share the gospel that's the most fun thing to me is that um i even got to where i was um i would sit on the front porch and of course we're in texas so it's still like 80 degrees at halloween um and i would sit on the front porch in a rocking chair and i had the skeletons hooked up to the rocking chair so that when i rocked they danced and i had <laughs> I had Mary Mary playing in the background, take the shackles off my feet. Yes. So I could. <laughs> and you had so, your banner and yes, everything. Yes, and the banner. Yeah, I, I kind of went maybe a little overboard, okay. maybe kind of. That's but okay. it was so That's fun. Right. It just, it became probably other just really than. Just fun, yeah. Well, I mean, I love Thanksgiving and Christmas, but it was just so much fun because Thanksgiving and Christmas. And people aren't know, really expecting that for Halloween. They're not. And it, it just um, it just lit up my life, for, you know, yeah. for to do that. And, and to see people's so. probably like surprise reactions. They're just not used yeah. to seeing yeah. things like that. Okay, tell us about the Halloween acrostic. So moms, dads can remember Okay, this is how Christians, this is a good way for Christians to think of Halloween. Yeah, so I just kind of did H as the history of Halloween. If you want to teach your kids kind of where Halloween started and go back to the Celtics and the Catholics, it's, you know, pretty easy to look that up on Wikipedia. So H and is history. History, but also to change hallow to holy. And, you know, that's just, it's, I guess semantics a little bit, but holy is more understandable, I think, to kids and to most people than hallow. Um, o is your opening doors to strangers. You don't do that any other time of the year, probably. You're very careful. You're looking through the peephole. You're, you know, not answering the door because you don't know who it is. But on Halloween, you open your door, and uh, and it's a, for L. It's a good way to love your neighbors. You know, if you're going to have a cookout and you're just trying to get to know your neighbors, that's a great way to show love to them. The why is, of course, young children. Um, teaching young children about the gospel, the, the younger they get exposed to that, the more likely they are to believe that later on in life. Um, studies show that past the age of 13, it gets harder and harder to share the gospel and for them to uh, want to have that in their lives. They've gotten a lot of other influences at that point. Exactly, and they're gonna get a lot more um, through college. So mm -hmm. um, the W is uh, the Word of God, and just using the Word of God like that, it's amazing. The Word of God is alive, mm -hmm. and it, it, it touches people. It can people. surprise you. It touches yeah. people in ways that you had no idea that um, it was gonna do that. And which reminds you, I love when that happens, when you share a verse or you talk about a verse and someone gets something out of it that you didn't even think of. Mm -hmm. It's just a reminder that it's really the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. We're just ambassadors, messengers. Exactly. We don't, you know, we proclaim yeah. truth and the Holy Spirit has it. And I think that that's true. That's a. Yeah. And so we try to get all fancy and, and, you know, share the gospel and we do all these procedures that we go through and really it's we just need sharing truth. the word. Yeah. And um, so that's, that's, that's pretty w. easy. Yeah, so E, um, um, everyone gets something for free. And, you know, that's, that's just an example of God's love and grace, that His grace is free. Salvation is free. It, it's to anybody mm -hmm. who asks for it. Not cheap, but free. Because, and yes. like candy, it costs you something. 
Yes. It costs you something, but the person you gave it to, it costs nothing. I and gave, obviously yes. we know that salvation costs the cost of God's only son, Jesus. Mm-hmm. But for us, it was free. So that means it's not cheap, yeah. but it's free. And and they're they're at your door knocking and you just open it and give it to them. That's, mm. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, the other E is eternity. You may be affecting someone's eternal destiny by sharing the gospel this one time. You don't know that that five-year-old that sees your heart during this uh, time of year, you don't know what he's going home to. But he may, there that little seed may have been planted. You don't you know. You just don't know. So why not do it? You know, if, and for if the there's parents, a chance. Too. The parents are, that's a huge, you know, children lead their parents to the Lord a lot of times. Because what if that child now asks his mom, well, who is Jesus? Or what is that lady talking about? Um, you know, eternal life. What does that mean? And then it makes their parents who may have gone to church when they were children and then as adults they stopped, it may get them to thinking, mm, maybe we need to, you know, go back to church. Yeah. So um And then in and then in is um new. You know, you're starting something new in your neighborhood. Um, and I mentioned before our church does light the night where somebody in the neighborhood has a cookout or just a, a get together. And uh, you're being the bearer of good news. And that's so rare in our day. We hear so much bad news. And um, you also fake news. We hear the term fake news all the time. And this is the least fake news you'll ever hear. Yeah. This is the truth. Yeah. This is probably the only truth that matters. The ultimate and truth the, and the source of all truth, the beginning and the end of all truth, too. That's right. And um, so, you know, the, Satan wants us to believe that it's um, that God's word is the fake news. You know, he's been saying this from the garden. He's been saying, did God really say? You know, he got Eve to doubt. And so that's the fake news that we have. But God said, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes, it's for everybody. And so don't believe the the lie, believe the truth. And um, so I can... That is the... The new good news News. that we are giving people. And also new in the sense that this could be a new tradition that you start for your family. Like my mom was saying, like one of her goals is not, it wasn't to sell banners, but to get other people to um, use this as a mode of redemption and to share the gospel and to love your neighbor and to be hospitable to those around you. This is such a rare opportunity that all of us have. Um, and that's that's me included. I don't think that I've thought about it necessarily in this way. I think just now that I have a child, I'm starting to think about it. I haven't celebrated Halloween in a, you know, a long time. Um, but now I am starting to think about that. And she's right, what an opportunity that we have. So this could be this could be something that you start with your family. You could find your own verses, your own pictures. Maybe you are an artist. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're like me and you're not an artist at all. Um, but there's, there's a way that you can share this message of truth with those around you. Yep. Anything else you want to add? No, uh, I think I can, I'll share, you know, and you can share on your um, different social media outlets. Yeah, I'll show you how she does it and and, the banners that she's made before. Yeah, and the pumpkin story, you know, you can share that and um, yeah, just go out and have fun. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for listening. I will see you back here on Monday. I think on Monday, you can, you can tell me what you think about this. We will talk about a biblical forgiveness. This is a question that a lot of you guys have asked me. There was a recent uh, murder case in Dallas surrounding this uh, particular issue. And a lot of you guys have asked me to address it. So I think that's what we're going to talk about on Monday. And I will see you guys back here then.